Hi. How do I say <laughs> Kelly in a southern accent? Kelly. Yeah, that was pretty good. Yeehaw, Kelly. Oh, yeah. Pane. I, nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> I mean, I'm trying to get the... That was, that was something. I know. How would they say Penny in a southern accent? Yeehaw. Penny. Penny. <laughs> Feel like I don't I'm like know. Calling, yeah, I feel like I'm calling you into dinner. Penny. It's like the dinner about. Yeah. Penny. That will work. Penny. Maybe someone can say my name in a southern accent. Penny. <gasps> yes, please. That would be really cool. Mm-hmm. Be it's... like an addition to the dark star like voice yeah. challenge. Who can say Penny in, in a the southern, southern accent? accent? But make it hot. <gasps> yeah. Challenge on. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> so this week we have an author. Yeah, <laughs> we do. Okay, so this week we read The Pieces Left Behind by Ryan Marie. Yeah. And we've got her here to chat with us in a little bit. She's so much fun. She's so fun. She's, she's very sweet. We, she is very we love sweet. Her. And she's mm-hmm. going to write a book. Another one that I'm really excited about. <laughs> called Edging Penny. We got her. Yeah, we inspired her a little bit. Um, yeah. I, I mentioned that um, she was Edging Penny. And then she said, that sounds like a book title. So now Penny has become an yeah. inspiration for our little novella. Whatever you authors need, I am here. We are here. Oh, we are here. I'm apparently giving, <laughs> I'm apparently just giving out title names. And then Penny gets to be in the book with multiple dudes. Yeah. I mean, for the greater good. I know. But I mean, what's up with that? I want to be in a book with multiple dudes. I got to do what I got to do. Next time you give the title and I... <laughs> I want to be in the book with the dudes. Okay, Kelly, let's talk about your wine. Okay. So we can get into this interview because it was so much fun. Yeah, yeah. It was super fun. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Um, I got this um, because it sort of goes along with writing. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, it's called Story Point. Um, And the label is super pretty. It is pretty. Ta-da. It's a caps off, full bodied with bold notes of blackberry jam. This is all in caps, so that's why. It's blackberry jam, toasted oak, mocha, and spice. Bah, bah, bah. Kelly's taking some narration classes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Let's I'm do excited our thing. for this. Do our thing. Should we look at our color? Look Penny at always it. skips that step. She's so excited to do all the other things. I mean, it looks different. The different ones look different. Not too much. <sighs> Yeah, it's red. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's let's swirl this. Oh. You're the worst. I'm the ooh, ooh. sexy legs. There are some sexy legs. Look at this nice little drip here. <laughs> That's what she said. Yeah. Look at those. So Ryan asked us the other day. So I don't know if you guys know this. So when we talk about sexy legs, there's um when you swirl it. If we're so professional, there's like how it drips down. It's really slow when it's dry, which means it's extra good. So the more sexy legs on it, the better. So it goes like slowly down instead of there's nothing there. It has to do with the viscosity of the wine. The viscosity. It's like water. There's nothing there. But then wine, when you get the good stuff, it's like. And it looks sexy. It does. It's sexy Look legs. That. that looks real nice. Yeah. Some good Exhibit sexy A. legs. Okay. Let's do this, Kelly. I was going to say it's very jammy. It's a blackberry jam. And then it did, I was going to say like a smoky like oak, but like toasted oak. It does very spicy. Mmm, mm, spicy. It's very delightful It definitely smells nose. like a cab. Mm-hmm. Look at you go now. You're, you've come so far, Penny. I know. I don't even drink red and now I know what a cab smells like. It's from all the cabs Kelly drinks. Mmm. Mmm. Yeah. Ooh. 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 Mm. Ooh, you get the spice right at the end. Ooh. Yeah. Where do you feel it? It's kind of all over. You get the tannins here in the front and up here. Ah, a lot of tannins. Yeah, a lot of tannins up here. Mm-hmm. Spice on the tip of the tongue and in the back of the throat. Oh, I think in the back. Hold on. I got the spice in the back of the throat. Oh, a little. Uh-huh. Just a tiny, tiny little bit. Mm-hmm. This one's a good one, Kelly. Mm-hmm. I like this one. Well done, story point. It reminds me of a book guy that we read. The wolf guy. Wolf and, oh, Wolf um, and the Wildflower? Yes. Ooh. Wolf and the Wildflower guy. Scythe. Mm. This is Scythe in a Bottle. Damn. Yes, that's a great one. I agree with that. I don't, I'm not going to come up with somebody different. Scythe. Man, I don't know if I can beat that one. Yeah. What, would it be a spit or a swallow? Kelly? Oh, my God. Swallow that 
swallow that wolf man down. Mm. Mm. Mm-hmm. So, mine isn't a very exciting. Mm. It's a Chardonnay. It was Washington mm. State. Found Ooh, it. That, okay. This one actually has some um, description of it. Ooh, fun. Juicy citrus, apple aromas mm. with an oak accents. Mm. Okay, I'm going to look into the color because apparently I never look at the color. Guess what, guys? It looks like a white wine. Look at that. I'm just, that was the steps we were told to take. <gasps> Ooh, I got some. Not as good as yours, but they're there. Do you? I can't see them from this Not angle. Not very well. They're like nothing compared to yours. Nothing compares to you. You know that song, right? Yeah, but that was, uh. I can't do it like Sinead. Nobody. should try. Who can? Nobody can. I can't. Nothing compared. Nope. See, I can't. One nope. more time. Just for good luck. Nothing compared. No, you gotta go no, higher. I know. I'm getting in the. Nothing. Nothing compares. Tell you. <laughs> <laughs> and this is where everyone turns down their volume. Yeah, exactly. We're not. We're, no. Ooh. Apple, for sure. It's my home. I don't know. I can't. Just it's like apple. a very, like, mute apple. <laughs> Is that bad form? Yes! <laughs> I cannot believe you said that. We're going to take... You guys are all questioning what she just said and you do not want to know. Oh, it's gone for a reason. Don't smell this. Honey. Don't say it! Don't say it! Okay, <laughs> smell okay, my wait, wine, okay. Kelly. Okay, I'm going to smell this wine. Mmm. <laughs> I can't. I can't even say what I I got some butter. (laughs) (laughs) A little buttery Chardonnay? Yeah. (laughs) Well, Um. it tastes great. (laughs) You're terrible. (laughs) So now everyone just gets to wonder what I said. We're not going to even go there. Benny loves me. Damn you. So anyway, after all that ridiculousness. We had a great interview with Ryan Marie. In all seriousness, she was amazing. Um, you're going to love it. There is very deep um, conversation at the beginning. We do talk about suicide and um, sexual assault of males. So if that's something that's triggering you, maybe you should skip a little bit of it. Uh-huh. But if not, and if you're any, either way, it's so empowering how she talks about it and mm-hmm. her experience with it in... Um, you should listen. But mm-hmm. if you can't, totally understand. But mm-hmm. here is Ryan Marie. Hello. We are here with Ryan Marie. She is the author of the Magnolia Creek series. And we're going to talk about um, kind of the whole series. But mostly we're going to focus on The Pieces Left Behind, which is the first book in the series. So good. Yeah. And the is it the fourth book um, is coming out um, pretty soon, right? Yes, late June. It's with the alphas and betas, and then we'll do final edits, and then she's done. Yay! <gasps> That's exciting. Congratulations. Thank you. I'm so excited. I, I'm, I'm excited and I'm sad because I feel like these people are my true friends and family, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, how am I going to go on from this? Aww, like, oh. It is hard moving on from a series of books, even as readers. It's kind of like, yeah. oh, I don't want to go yet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Completely. Can you tell us a little bit about um, Missing Pieces? The first book, um, what's funny is the first book wasn't going to be my first book. Um, It was actually kind of a happy accident. I completely lost the first, the file of the first book I was going to release. (gasps) And they just disappeared on me. Everything, everything. So I cried my eyes out for like a week or two. And then my best friend was like, "Uh uh-uh, sister, get up. You're going to do this no matter what. And so I had the story that I had started writing, gosh, years ago, but it is incredibly emotional and it deals with some pretty heavy subjects. Mm -hmm. I wasn't sure, um, but I just loved it. I loved the characters. um, And I said, yeah, I'm going to roll with it. We're just going to go. So it it starts with, um, I hate to ruin it. I don't want to ruin it for anybody, but it starts with a death, (laughs) which... 
you know, really happy, fun, go lucky book. It's, it starts off. It, it was, off. I'm not going to lie. This was the first book I started out crying on. <laughs> <laughs> like I wait till like the middle or the end. I'm like, this is, like, why am I so sad already? I had a lot of people that would message me and they're like, does this get better? Cause I'm bawling my eyes out. And if mm -hmm. anybody else dies, I can't take it. I'm like, it'll, it'll get better. And then it'll get worse. <laughs> it'll get better. <laughs> I really focused heavy on um, the emotions because there's some really difficult subjects in there that mm -hmm. I feel um, aren't always properly represented. And so I really wanted to represent the mental health side accurately. Mm -hmm. um, and so I really had to dive in with deep emotions on that. I was crying when I'd write it. I, I, I mean, there are points where I was just bawling my eyes out and I'm like, why am I doing this to myself? Why am I gonna do this to readers? But I love books that like rip my heart out. Totally. Mm -hmm. I love just bawling my eyes out. But then I'm like, as long as they like put me back together, I'm okay. But I love a good cry. I, I'm probably one of the few people that are like, give me angst, give me tears, give it all. I want it all. It's cathartic sometimes to get that. Like, yeah, to just get it out. To get all that raw emotion out. Yeah. But even like the beginning of your book, like it was like sad, but then it was like the anger. Like you did such a good job yeah. of like combining those two emotions where you were like so sad, but then angry for her because you like felt that emotion mm -hmm. too. It was great. Yeah. And, and again, I wanted to show that, that how it affects people, um, your loved ones, the anger of um, you know, why are you leaving me? Um, mm -hmm. the sadness of why are you leaving me? <laughs> and, um, I really, I, I like, I tell people I go into method writing where I fall in to characters and it's the only way I can write to really get the deep emotions. I have to, I, I want people to feel what I feel, which is usually like, heartbreak. Oh my God, I'm going to throw up. This <laughs> is I can't handle this type thing. So mm -hmm. I really have to lose myself in it. You could That's really true. tell like what Cami was feeling mm -hmm. like throughout this whole thing. You, like you did a great job with that. Yeah. Thank you. I, it's very personal to me. Um, I don't know if you, uh, there's the letter. So the thing is that was my letter. Um, wow. I, I suffer from uh, mental illness. I'm not ashamed of it. Um, I think there's such a huge stigma behind it and, um, people are afraid. They're afraid mm -hmm. of what their friends and family are going to say, how they're going to judge them. And I've come to realize, no, I shouldn't hide this because I have been able to get through the worst of it and I'm thriving and I'm doing really good. So other people who are suffering, who are hiding it should be able to see that, that there is a way out. Um, don't be embarrassed to ask for help. So I took that letter that I had written many years ago and I said, you know what, I'm going to adjust it, of course, to fit the character, but that was mine. That was the, oh my gosh, words. I'm kidding. Like, oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that's just so powerful. That's amazing. Yeah. Like, oh my goodness. That is very powerful and such a strong, amazing thing to do. Wow. It was scary putting that in there. But again, I felt like if I'm going to do it, I, I got to do it right. I can't just kind of like, well, I've heard, well, what I've read in other books. And I said, no, I'm going to just go all in like, you know, balls to the wall. We're going to go for it. Um, and then I wrote it and then I got the letter and I shred it and I was like, okay, it's gone. It's done. That was cathartic. I was wow. just going to ask if that was a big like healing process for you too. It was getting it all out afterwards I was like oh my gosh I feel so much better <laughs> um it, it and it's it's hard to explain just because it's you know words on paper not everybody knows where those come from they think as an author you just made them up but just putting them down was like such a relief and afterwards I was just like I can finally breathe like how have I not known that I needed to do this this is it was it was um emotional but it, it felt really good Wow. Yeah. And it's, that's awesome for you to share that because like you said, like, how have I not known that I needed to do this? Probably because nobody else has shared that that's something that would be helpful. Yeah. It's you know? so vulnerable. And then to publish mm -hmm. it and to share your story, like mm -hmm. I, I am in awe. It was definitely hard. Um, but like I said, that there are so many people that are suffering. I, I call it the mask. Every morning mm -hmm. you wake up and you put on that mask to face other people because the outside, 
um, that people see is the happy-go-lucky. You know, everybody was like, oh my gosh, you're perky. You must have been a cheerleader. You're so happy. And it was always like, I know. And then you come home and you're so drained and exhausted. You pull off that mask and you're just like, I can't do this anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, And so people don't realize that some of the happiest people you will meet are suffering from things like um, depression, anxiety, bipolar, and we have perfected the art of wearing a mask um, so that other people see what we want them to see. Wow. And I mean, it gets into like more deeper Mm -hmm. emotional stuff and um, I don't want to give too much away, but there, <laughs> there is a sexual assault in there, but it isn't on a female and yeah. it was no. such a unique twist. And I don't think, you know, that there's so, is, you know, tons of books out there that go from the female having mm-hmm. that, but I don't, I haven't read one yet that had the male perspective on it. And it was so interesting and different. And I, I'm really glad you wrote it. It was such an interesting <laughs> read because yeah, I think people forget that that happens yeah. to men too. And it was handled really well in your book as well thank you I have to do of course it you know off page because that's just something right that is one thing I don't think I could write in detail but it does I think people forget that um men are victims too with a lot of this stuff and so I mean I threw everything but the kitchen sink into this book I was like (laughs) let's just go for it let's just do it because if this is the only book you write we're gonna get it all out we're gonna do it I love it great (laughs) Thank you. Well, that kind of leads me into my next thing. How do you create your characters? Like I love when I ask this question, I always tell Kelly, I get so excited to ask this question because every author that we have asked is completely different on how they do it. Mm -hmm. So I'm always so interested. I always tell my husband and he laughs, but I'm like, there are so many people and voices in my head. And he's like, there's medication for that. And I'm like, (laughs) but I don't want it. But they, you know, I'll sit down, I'll think like, okay, I want to write a story that's um, taboo and age gap. So let's figure out these characters. And I literally will sit down. And I'm like, okay, I got him. He just got, they just come. And I, I don't build them like some people do. Um, I literally sit down, stick my fingers on the keys and I go, okay, let's go. Um, sometimes it's like blackout almost. I finish and I'm like, whoa. I wrote that. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's what we're going with. Um, but I don't like. I don't plot. I don't, you know, map out. I don't have sticky notes everywhere. Um, I just, I just sit down and I just go for it. And they literally um, come to me. Sometimes the name will come first, and then I'll build the character around that and what I think he or she looks like. And sometimes I see a face. And I'm like, okay, we're going to figure out who she is as we go along. I'm very panster when it comes to writing. Very, very much. That's great. Yeah. I well, kind it. of along those lines, what inspires you to become a writer? Um, I So I fell in love with reading in high school. And it was reading not necessarily, um, you know, it started off as it was a class and I had to read the book because it was required. Um, but it was the first book that I stayed up all night long and read. I didn't go to sleep. I finished the book and I got, went to school. And from there, I just loved books. But as I got further along, I was kind of like, I don't know what I want to do with my life. Um, I'm not super shy. <laughs> so I said, you know what? <laughs> I think I want to do broadcast journalism and I want to do sports. Um, that got put on the back burner because I got married. We had kids right away. And the, the desire to tell stories was still there um, in, in whatever way. And so um, one day I kind of was like, you know, I had these, these, these scenes running through my mind. I was like, where is this coming from? So I sat down and wrote it and then it kept going and going and it just... It really um, sued that desire to bring a story to people. And so I thought, I'll just get it out, and it'll kind of be like my secret dream come true, you know, um, the whole journalism aspect. Um, and I did that for 10 years. I hid stories. I hoarded them for 10 years. Wow. And it was really just something I did for me. Um, and then I finally was just like, should I do this? <laughs> should I go for it? But it was something that was just kind of, you know, my personal, if I had a career, this is what it would be. Um, 
But I didn't. I kind of hit it. I didn't tell anybody. <laughs> I didn't even tell my husband. I really wow. hit it. <laughs> oh wow! So I'm sorry. This is a side question. <laughs> Kelly's gonna be like, "Here's more." Are no, you? So this series is almost done. Do you have plans for your next series? I do. I have a lot. Um, I'm probably pretty set with stories until like 2026, 2027, because I've got so many rolling. Um, But so in the there's a double epilogue in the pieces left behind. Um, And there's a character. She's a she's the daughter. We can say there's a daughter featured in this book and her name is Dagan. And Dagan is grown up and she's going to get her own series uh, this November. Um, it, it, she's going to start the new, it's a crossover. So she will start the new series and then it'll go on, um, and go from there. Um, and it's, I, a lot of people know, cause I, I can't have, hold a secret. I'm horrible at secrets. <laughs> the minute I get something, I'm like, okay, I'm going to wait to tell them. And then I'm like, no, nah, I'm going to tell them all right now. Um, <laughs> but it's called the dare bros and there's mm-hmm. some, um, some really hard um, street street bred um, guys that with tattoos and motorcycles and we're um, listening. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, grumpy sun, sunshine. Um, I've got a, a bully one that he's mean, but also you're just like, oh, I love him so much. Mm-hmm. <laughs> My team is amazing. My Red Hill ladies, uh, they're they're freaking fabulous. Um, <laughs> Anytime I introduce a new male character, you know, everybody would be like, he's mine. I call him. And then somebody's like, no, I call him. <laughs> so right now, the next male, his name is Hendrix. And we have quite a few ladies that are like, I will fight you for it. You know, I will cut you. <laughs> it's really funny. I love it. That's so awesome. as I introduce more, there's just, you know, I'll, I'll introduce something and then there's a whole thread. It's like, mine, mine, no, mine, mine, mine. <laughs> like so. the seagulls in Finding Nemo. <laughs> <laughs> mine, oh, mine, mine, mine. Exactly. Like that. So that's what's coming next. I have a few novellas that will come out between cool. then, but that's the big next series. Cool. Ooh. This is a, a question that we don't have written down. Um, ooh, I Kelly, was gonna, yeah. she's going off script. I'm know, impressed. That usually is what happens. When I'm, I'm like, ooh, okay. No, I was going to say, I loved all your character names. And especially, you just yes. threw out like Hendrix right there. And Dagan, the daughter's name. I was like, that's a rad name. Where do you come <laughs> up with all these names? Like, I am a name person. I love names. I love unusual names. I love traditional names. And so I really just will, you know, I hear a name and I'm like, ooh, I like that. And I'll write it down. I have a list a running list of unique names and different names. And, you know, there's like a name on there that's Atanai. I'll probably never use it because people will be like, Athanes, what is this? (laughs) You know, I write down some. Um, And then I'm Hispanic. So a lot of it just comes from, you know, my culture, maybe people I know. Um, They're in the book. People have asked me, they're like, how do you pronounce Cammie's sister's name? And I, I say, you know, a lot of people... They probably pronounce it Kathia, but it's actually Katya. Um, I was wondering that too, so I'm really glad that you said that. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Um, But I love names. So anytime I hear something, I'm like, oh, I'm going to have to use that. And then in between my side characters, I use a lot of my my girls' names. Um, Oh, that's sweet. I ask them, I'm like, hey, do you want to be a side character? And they're like, um, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) You're in. <laughs> That's so I awesome. Just, I like it. Let's talk about your sex scenes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Tell us how you write those. Tell us everything. Um, I do have to do a little research. I do have to say, like, will this work? And my husband's like, oh, my God. Okay. You're like, it's for science. <laughs> so- it is for, <laughs> it's for the greater good. <laughs> I'm like, don't complain. I think most husbands will be like, yes, I will volunteer. I mm-hmm. volunteer for you. Yes, <laughs> Um, but I re- I've read some books where like the sex scenes are like really quick. Yeah. And mm-hmm. over. And I mean, I guess they're pretty realistic if you think about it. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, books is an escape for a lot of people. So yes. I was like, nah, we're gonna get we're gonna we're gonna have them feeling it. By the time I'm done with the scene, I want them to be like, excuse me, I need to go to the restroom. I will be back type thing. Yes. Um, yeah. So I, I mean, there's in the third book, there's a, a scene and a position and I'm like, 
is this going to work? So I'm in my room and I'm like bending over the bed, stretching my arms, lifting legs. And people are like, well, my husband's like, what are you doing? I was like, I'm trying to see if this is going to work. She's taller than me. So her arms are totally going to reach. But... <laughs> <laughs> and, and my my PAs, besties, um, Cammie and Gabby, I'm like drawing a picture and I'm like, do you think this will work? And they're like, what is that? I'm like, oh, that's her butt. And then um, <laughs> these are, and they're like, sure, write it. We'll, do it. we'll figure it I out. Love it. But this is my favorite question I ask to all of our authors. So what advice would you give to somebody that's thinking about writing their first book? Uh, I'm going to get the give the advice that I got. Just do it. Why are you waiting? What's holding you back? What's the worst that could happen? Um, I joined the Queen Melanie Harlow's authors group um, it, it, after, you know, and I, I contributed a little bit um, to one of her books that that talks about uh, mental illness and and different a different form of it. So I contributed a little bit and you have to submit a sample when you join her group, kind of to prove like, I am an author and I'm not here to steal, you know, anybody's work. And she was like, why aren't you doing it? And I said, I am terrified. And she said, why? The What's the worst that's going to happen? You put it out there, you know, self-publish, you put it out there, nobody reads it. Okay, you tried. But she said, the best thing that can happen is that people will love it. And so she said, it was literally just do it. And then I think Daphne Elliott chimed in and she was like, do it do it. So I was like, okay. Um, so I, you know, it's not really like some sage advice from a wise old woman. Um, <laughs> it's more of just like, I mean, again, what's the worst that's going to happen? You write it, maybe it doesn't go where it wants to. Okay. You tried, but don't hold yourself back. Don't, um, don't deny yourself that joy and that accomplishment when that first reader comes to you and says, oh my God, I can't tell you how much I connected with this book. Or, you know, I loved your writing so much. Don't deprive yourself of that joy. Oh, That's the word. I awesome. love that. Thank you. Thank yeah. you so yeah. much. All right, fun blush questions. Who was your okay. first celebrity crush? Oh, easy. Joey McIntyre from New Kids oh on the Block. Oh my God. <gasps> That's a good one. Guess what? I have to tell you something about Joey McIntyre. Make me, is it going to make me not want to be your friend? Maybe. <laughs> no, you're going to hate her after this. If, okay. If that was so, your first um, I crush. also love New Kids on the Block. I've seen them in concert three times, um, twice as an adult, and uh, it was last summer, and we were, I was on the floor right next to their, like, second stage, and um, I held his hand for a prolonged period of time. I know. <laughs> you don't hate her. It's okay. Oh, I... I was convinced at like the age of nine, I was like, I'm marrying him. Like, this is it. We're going to have beautiful Joey McIntyre babies and I'm <laughs> marrying him. Yeah. And so I'm, I'm, I'm a little bummed out that didn't happen, but I always tell my husband, you're a good substitute. You're, you're a good, good villain. Substitute. Good. Okay. I'm ready to ask okay. you this next question. I'm so okay. excited for this. Tell us about a time you went skinny dipping. <laughs> um, <laughs> I love it when it dawns on people like, yeah, like oh, oh no. <laughs> um, so my husband's not going to watch this. <laughs> um, so my husband and I are high school sweethearts. We started dating when I was um, 15, 14, 15 years old. Aww. Somewhere, somewhere at the, around that time. But like most young couples, we did the breakup and the get back together and the breakup. And um, and so during a time when we were broken up, um, I was a dancer for a semi-pro hockey team. Ooh. And, what? Uh, That's awesome. Um, <laughs> I'm like, where is my family? <laughs> um, and... Like on the edge of my seat right now. <laughs> She's edging. You're getting um... her to be. You're... <laughs> Tell me everything. That's. That's a fabulous title for a book, Edging Penny. <gasps> oh. If I am the next title of your book, I would seriously <laughs> die. <laughs> that's sad. I think I'm going to have to, like, put it in my Rolodex somewhere because that is amazing. I would that die and go to heaven yeah. happy. Is that great I need to, like, copyright it. Nobody out there take that. I'm going to use it. Don't take it. <laughs> um, Love it. 
So, you know, we we go and party afterwards, um, and somebody's like, hey, let's go swimming. And I was like, I don't have a swimsuit. And they're like, duh, nobody does. And I was like, oh, Jesus Christ. I don't know if I can do this. <laughs> we were never supposed to... Um... Fraternize with the team. But you sure <laughs> did. Of course. <laughs> And so my friend was just like, have another shot and it, it'll all go away once you get there. And it did. Yep. <laughs> my fear of my traditions went away. So that was my one and only time. Um, and if you want a little bit more detail. Yes, yes um, we do. <laughs> that scene is actually going to be in um, a novella coming out in June. Oh, yeah, we're picking that book up. Yes, yes, please. Yeah, there's more in there. And I told a few of my friends, I was like, I think I'm going to put it in there because there are only. Do it, um, do it, do it. Y'all and the rest of the world that's going to watch this. <laughs> that I'm now, I'm now praying to God that um, my husband doesn't decide to, like, I'm going to watch this. I'm going to say, absolutely not. It's a foreign language. <laughs> It's girl it's talk. It's girl talk. You're not but, allowed. Exactly. Um, but there is more detail in it. And I was like, I'm going to use it. Yeah. Like, it's a hockey book. And yep. yeah. Sign me up for that. Yeah. What's your biggest turn off? Maybe somebody who can't um, see the the funny side in things. Who is, yeah. you know, no, everything's miserable. Mm -hmm. the, the, the person who it's always half empty, never half full. Okay. This is my favorite one. We collect okay. these two. <laughs> Tell us a story about after you've had a whole bottle of wine. Um, uh, <laughs> okay, so I, I'm not a big drinker. I actually don't drink anymore. And it's pretty much just because, um, not for any reason other than I'm old and it hurts and it takes several <laughs> days. You know, it's like day four and I'm like, why haven't I died yet? I can't say <laughs> So I was like, I'm just going to lay off of that. But before that, um, back home, um, we're from New Mexico. And so we had a friend and he was dating this girl. And he was like, let's go to the martini bar. And I'm like, okay, mm. I've never had martinis. I'm a pretty basic, you know, wine drinker. But yeah, let's do it. And we took one and I was like, ooh, this tastes like candy. So we had another one. And I was like, this is more candy. And I don't know how much we drank, but I do know at some point we were crawling through this girl's house. <laughs> I don't know why, because she lived by herself. And then, you know, we're whispering, and then we end up at her boyfriend's house, brand new house, brand spanking new house, hadn't even, like, filled the house with furniture. I spent the evening in his bathroom. Um, oh. emptying the contents of my soul. <laughs> and mind you, the friend next to me, she's like, it's okay, let it out. I'm a nurse. I'm like, oh. you're, you're a NICU nurse. <laughs> you cannot fool me right there. She sounds amazing. <laughs> like, I got you, I got you. And then we come out and my husband goes, do you realize we watched the entire episode of Boys in the Hood? Like, we watched the whole movie. And I was like... I don't really care. All I know is I need to get home because I feel like the Grim Reaper is coming for me. I see that. <laughs> it was awful. So, um, yeah, Bobka and I, we had a falling out. And uh. she and I have never gotten along since. Thank you so much for this. This was amazing. Like, I had such a great Thank time you. talking to you. You are inspiring. I did too. Yeah. I love it. Uh. <laughs> Thank you so much. I have been looking forward to this for so long. We would love to talk to you again. Oh, absolutely. Thank you mm -hmm. so much. Thank you, ladies. Edging Penny is going to be the next one yeah. we want to talk to you about. <laughs> hey, no pressure. If I don't win like a literary Nobel Prize for that, I'm going to call foul. Yeah, because absolutely. We're going to throw some blows. It is sure. literary magic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you so much. Thank you, all ladies. Yeah, we'll talk to you have a good one. Bye. 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 Thank you. Yay. Thanks, Ryan. That was so great. We loved her. It was amazing. Yeah. All right. Let's talk about next week, Kelly. I'm going to Vanna White this. Yeah, you are. Robin Jeffrey. We're going to have Robin Jeffrey here talking with us about her book, Hungry is the Night. It's, uh, it takes place in Seattle. In Seattle, the past doesn't stay buried. It comes back to bite you. <gasps> mm, I, add, I added the bite. sound effect. Yeah, werewolves. Ooh. Ooh. This could be fun. Cover super cool. We are so excited to talk to Robin. Mm -hmm. So join us next week. Okay, mm -hmm. ready, Kelly? Yep. Oh yeah, I gotta get this. Cheers, cheers. Ooh.